it is extremely important to understand the networking with the help of network diagram. I'll make the process of Proxmox networking simple for you. Even if you have never done networking before, this video will help you to understand how the Proxmox nodes will be communicating with each other and how the communication between the nodes will take place with the external networks, how the virtual networks will be communicating within each other and how the virtual machines will be communicating with the external network. So let me draw the network diagram and let us do it together. Suppose this is your Proxmox server. So this is the first Proxmox server that we created. So there is a physical switch also here, which is connected, of course, with the gateway also. And it is also responsible for providing the IP addresses to the computers on the network. So I might be having multiple computers here on my network. So that is one of the computers that might be getting the IP addresses in the same range of 192.168.100.1. And at the same time, I have established a connection from here to this particular Proxmox virtual environment. I have provided the IP address to PVE, which is the first node of Proxmox. And here the virtual bridge, which is defined is VMBR0. VMBR0 is in fact connected to the physical port and that physical port is connected to this particular network. That's why from the DHCP server connected through the switch, I'm getting the IP address of 192.168.100.2. I have created one more which is PVE1 and its IP address is 192.168.100.3 and same VMBR is also defined here and it is of course physically connected here to this particular network. Same way I have heard Proxmox node also which is again connected here and here it is getting the IP address of 192.168.100.4. Three Proxmox nodes are connected. For cluster, I need to have dedicated networking between these three nodes so that the communication between them takes place without any interruption. Right now, you can see if there are multiple machines, then of course, there will be a lot of traffic congestion and the communication between them will not be efficient. And if I'm creating any self storage also between these servers where synchronization will be taking place between these servers, then of course, interruption will be definitely there on the network and to avoid that i have created another network and that network is isolated from the existing network if i disconnect all the computers from the network these all are on the network of 192.168.100.0 and dhcp is providing them the ip addresses but i have manually configured and this switch is having another network where i defined 192.168.240.0 so i isolated one i created to make sure that the communication between all these servers are taking place and at the same time i have connected true nas the true nas is mainly for the backup or for nfs of all the proxmox nodes so the communication between these nodes and the true nas is isolated from the other computers on the network so all the ne computers on the network are in fact connected on this particular physical network all of these nodes are having two LAN cards. One physical LAN card is connected with this particular network and one physical LAN card is connected with this network. So all my physical devices on the network, my Wi-Fi router, uh, smartphones and devices, these are connected here. Now your question might be how these devices are getting internet because there is no physical connection between this internet gateway and these devices on the network. So for this, I have installed PFSense into this Proxmox cluster. Now this particular setup is in fact the Proxmox cluster. Any VM which is created here, it can be easily migrated from here, can be migrated here. The backup of the VM is taking place on the true NAS and the live migration is taking place between all these nodes. So I created a VM here, which is PFSense. This PFSense is working as an internet gateway. The external port is connected here with the virtual bridge and internal port is connected here with this particular virtual bridge or virtual switch so virtually external port is connected here the ip range of 192.168.100.1 and it is given an ip address of any ip address it can either take from the dhcp server directly from here and there must be an ip address 192.168.100. anything and here in pfsense i configured this as a dhcp server and this becomes our dhcp server now the IP address of this one is 192.168.240.1 and now it is responsible to give the IP addresses to any of these machines on the network. In case you want to have physical PFSense, you can connect directly the physical cable with these switches 
instead of creating the VM. The VM will definitely reside inside any of the nodes on live migration. All the nodes are having the same virtual bridge defined here. VMBR0, VMBR0, VMBR0 is created here also and VMBR1, VMBR1, VMBR1. This is created here as well. VM can be migrated to any of the Proxmox nodes. This is working as a DHCP server where external network is this and internal network is here. So the internet traffic on all my devices and all the machines is routed through here. Now one more thing that you can do here is that you can place another firewall here which will help you to block the internet traffic from here. But what I did here that I have defined the gateway only here in these VMBRs. So they are not able to access the internet and from internet also the traffic will be blocked to all these Proxmox nodes. If you want to access any of the nodes of Proxmox from internet using the public IP, suppose there could be the public IP address also. So if through public IP or through DNS you want to access any of these, you will need to do the port forwarding on this particular gateway as well as on the PFSense. For example, if you want to access PFSense directly, here you will do the port forwarding of PFSense on this particular gateway and then you will be able to access PFSense from the internet. In case you want to access this particular Proxmox node, so in both places you will need to do the port forwarding which will help you to access the Proxmox from anywhere in the world. So I can create one more VMBR which will be VMBR2. It is not necessary that I should be connecting virtual bridge to any of the physical network. So it could be isolated from any of the network where the communication only between the VMs could take place. Now, for example, if I'm creating any VM here and this doesn't need any internet connection, this doesn't need any communication with the external networks also, which are devices here or the internet. And if I want only the communication between them, one of them can become the DHCP server here. And this can then give the IP addresses here directly, either to these PVEs or any VMs that I create within this. So this is the logical diagram. You can take the screenshot of this. You can take the snapshot. In your scenario, it could be only one PVE. It could be only two PVEs where you want to create the cluster between them or three PVEs where you can have the high availability cluster where the communication can take place between these nodes with the help of a dedicated network which can again be connected to any NAS storage or any SAN storage. You can also create the Ceph storage. In this particular course, you will see that how the cluster is created between two Proxmox nodes, how the cluster is created between three Proxmox nodes, and then how we have created the Ceph storage and how the Ceph storage is configured and how the live migration is done for a VM from this, this node to this node and this node to this node without any downtime. You will see that Windows Server will be installed in one of the machines and that machine will not be having any downtime when it is migrated on any of these PVEs. So any VM can be migrated from any of the Proxmox node on this particular cluster. High availability cluster is there when there is any hardware failure, when there is any virtual machine failure. So you won't be facing any problem.